From its very beginning, the human message was grafted into human history. The good news Christians have proclaimed through the ages is that Jesus Christ and for our salvation, God has entered human history in a unique way. History is crucial for understanding not only in the life of Jesus, but also the entire biblical message. The story of Christianity is the story of persecution of Christians and can be historically traced from the first century of the Christian era and to the present day. Christian missionaries and converts to Christianity have both been targeted for persecutions and sometimes to the point of being martyred for their faith. This time, I will not discuss the history of Christianity in its centuries, but I will share with you a person who made Christianity an official religion of Rome, and that is Constantine. Who is Constantine? Constantine, also known as Constantine the Great, was Roman Emperor from AD 306 to 337. Emperor Constantine reigned over a major transition in the Roman Empire and much more. After the battle at the Milvian Bridge, Constantine had been preparing to extend his territories under his rule. He took great care to develop a strong base of operations in Gaul and Great Britain. He spent over five years strengthening the borders along the Rhine. Constantine won the gratitude of many people in Gaul. An astute statesman, Constantine challenged his rivals one at a time, always protecting his flanks before making his next move. He had been preparing for it both militarily and politically for many years. He committed only one-fourth of his resources, thus making sure that during his absence, there would not be a major barbarian invasion or a revolt in his own territories. In order to preclude the possibility, Constantine offered his half-sister Constance in marriage to Licinius, and he may also have made a secret agreement with his future brother-in-law. This would seem to cover his flank, then Constantine would leave his mark on the Christian church for more than a thousand years. He used Licinius to conquer a territory from Europe. Christianity in Licinius' territories was divided over a number of issues, and such divisions led to public disorders. In 322, Constantine invaded Licinius' territories using the pretext that he was in pursuit of a band of barbarians who had crossed the Danube. Shortly thereafter, Licinius was murdered. Constantine was now sole master of the empire. Constantine would reign for the next 13 years until his death in 337. Now, as the absolute master of the empire, he set out on a board course. He would build a new room. That city was the very edge of Europe, where it almost touched to Asia Minor. Then construction began immediately. But Constantine reserved the right to determine his own religious practices and even intervene into the life of the church, for he considered himself as bishop of bishops. Repeatedly, even after his conversion, he took part in pagans' rites in which no Christians would participate and the bishops raised no voice of condemnation. The truth is, probably, Constantine was a sincere believer in the power of Christ. But this does not mean that he understood that power in the same way in which it had been experienced by those Christians who had died for it. Constantinople became the center for a thousand years, kept alive the political and cultural inheritance of the old empire. Others have claimed that Constantine was simply a shrewd politician who became aware of the advantages to be drawn from a conversion. The truth was, both interpretations are exaggerated. Constantine's conversion was very different from that of other Christians. At that time, people who were converted were put through a long process of discipline and instruction in order to make certain that they understood and lived their new faith. And then they were baptized. Their bishop became their guide and shepherd as they sought to discover the implications of their faith in various situations in life. 
Constantine's case was very different. Even after the Battle of Milvian Bridge and throughout his entire life, he never placed himself under the direction of the Christian teachers or bishops. Constantine himself remained a pagan priest, as befitted his role as emperor, and was not baptized until he was about to die. The most immediate consequence of Constantine's conversion was the cessation of persecution. Until then, even at times of relative peace, Christians had lived under the threat of persecutions. After Constantine's conversion, that threat and that hope dissipated. After Constantine's conversion, Christian worship began to be influenced by imperial protocol. An interesting example of this had to do on prayer on Sundays. At an earlier time, the practice was not to kneel for prayer on Sundays. For that is the day of our adoption when we approach the throne of the Most High as children and heirs of the Great King. According to Bruce Shelley, the Emperor Constantine is one of the major figures of Christian history. After his conversion, Christianity moved swiftly from the seclusion of the catacombs to the prestige persecuted minority. It ended the century as the established religion of the empire. Thus, the Christian church was joined to the power of the state and assumed a moral responsibility for the whole society. To serve the state, it arose to protest the secularization of the faith. But when the barbarians shattered, the government in the western half of the empire, even Benedictines, enlisted as missionaries to the pagans. This is the quotation of Constantine. The eternal, holy, and unfathomable goodness of God does not allow us to wander in darkness, but shows us the way of salvation. This I have seen in others as well as in myself. The lesson I learned from Constantine's life is that no matter how he incorporated pagan worship and Christianity into practices, he still contributed the very freedom that many Christians had also desired for so long, such as making Christianity an official religion of Rome. And what we believe today is because of the history that continues to inspire many people to spread the good news of Jesus Christ. That's all. Thank you.